morning. Today we are going to start 13th chapter. Uh, its name is point and their coordinate. Point and their coordinate in 3D. 3D. Last year we have done our 2D coordinate geometry. Is it okay? And this year now we are going to deal with the 3D. So there is not much difference between the 2D and the 3D, right? If you have a very clear concept about 2D, you will find very simple in 3D. Because everything will be same, there is a slight difference, right? The difference is, uh, in the case of 2D, we were having two coordinates, X and Y, clear? Now in 3D, we will have three coordinates. It will be X, Y, and Z. So the way we have, we calculated using the two coordinates for in 2D, same way we will be able to calculate the different things by using three different coordinates, X, Y, and Z. Is it okay? So first today, first topic will be the distance formula. If you remember, uh, last year we did distance, you might have done distance formula for 2D, clear? There what we did is, I will show you, uh, suppose you have two points A and B, clear? A and B and the coordinate of A is X1, Y1 and the coordinate of B is X2, Y2, clear? Now these two points are drawn in X, Y plane, clear? So how can we find the distance between the two points? That is called as distance formula. So we can find the distance between A, B by using the formula, very simple, square root over the square of the difference of the X coordinate. Square of, square of the difference of X coordinate. This is the square of the difference of X coordinate plus the square of the difference of y coordinate, y1 minus y2 whole square. So using this simple formula, last year we calculated the distance. You might have calculated the distance between the two point A and B. This will give you the distance between A and B. Clear? Here one thing I will make clear is uh, in the textbook, sometimes you will find this order different, right? You may see this as x2 minus x1 and this you may see as y2 minus y1. There is no difference. Is it okay? You can write this as x1 minus x2 or you can write this as x2 minus x1. Ultimately, whatever it comes uh, will be squared, so the result will be same. So the order does not matter. Is it very, very clear? So this is the formula for finding the distance between the two point A and B. Now what will happen? How we are going to deal with in 3D? Now, same thing we have. We have again two points. It is A and this is B. And the coordinate of A is because it is in 3D, this point is plotted on in 3D coordinate. Therefore, each point will have three coordinates. Clear? Here, each point had two coordinates. Now, here we will have three coordinates for each point. So, the coordinate for X will be, uh, A will be X1, Y1, Z1. Clear? And the coordinate of B will be X2, Y2 and Z2. Is this very clear? So, see the difference. Here, this is 2D, therefore there are two coordinates for each point and this is because 3D, so therefore there are three coordinates for each point. Am I very clear? Now we can similarly, same way we can find out the distance between A and B. So when you are calculating the distance between A and B, distance between A and B, we will just have the same thing, right? Here also we will have the square of the difference of X coordinate plus the square of the difference of Y coordinate and now because you have the third coordinate also, so you will also introduce the third coordinate and we will say that the square of the difference of Z coordinate. Clear? So distance between A and B will be calculated. Uh, square of the difference of X coordinate plus square of the difference of Y coordinate, Y1 minus Y2, whole is square and plus Z1 minus Z2, whole is square. So we, ca we calculated here, this is the square of the difference of x coordinate, this is the square of the co uh, square of difference of y coordinate, and this is the square of the difference of z coordinate, and then square root of all over. So this will give you the distance between a and b. So you can see here, these two formulas are very close, right? The difference is, just here we have this part extra because there are three coordinates, so we have here these three terms, and this, there are because only two coordinates, therefore we have only Am I very very clear to you or not? So, 
with this we will, we will be using this formula to find out the distance between the two points. Clear? So with this we will start the question. Now we are going to solve question number one. Now we have to find the distance of that given point from the origin. From the origin. We have, there are three questions in this question. There are four parts. There are four sub part of this question. So I will show you one question, right? I will show you question number one, Roman number one. Right? So Roman number one. Now in the question we are asked to find out the distance of the given point from the origin. Am I very clear? Now you the point that you are going to whose distance you are going to calculate from the origin is Roman number one, this point. We are going to find out the distance of this point from the origin. Am I very clear? This is your x coordinate, this is your y coordinate, and this is your z coordinate. Is it okay? Uh, maybe we will name this point as for, for our own convenience, we can name this point as A. Clear? And we have to now find out the distance of this point from the origin. Clear? You already know what is the coordinate of the origin. At the origin, origin is the point of intersection of the three coordinates. Clear? And there the value of x, y, and z all will be 0. The coordinate of the world is uh, the coordinate of origin. The coordinate of origin is always 0, 0. In x, y plane, you have already seen, you already know at the point of intersection of the x and y coordinate, the value of x and y is 0. So in 3D also, at the origin, the value of x and y and then z is all 0. So we have to now find out the distance of this point from the origin. Very simple. Now, this is the coordinate that you have and then you origin because you are going to find the distance of this point from the origin. So origin I am marking as O. Origin I am marking as O. And the coordinate of this point origin will be 0, 0 and 0. Now you got the coordinate of the two points. In order to find out the distance between any two points, you need to have the coordinate of two points. Clear? You need to have the coordinate of the two end points. And so now we have the coordinate of the two end points. This is your A whose distance is going to be calculated from the origin. And this is the coordinate of your origin. Hope I am able to make you very clear. Okay. Now what we can do is from here we can uh, name anyone as x1, y1 and z1. And the other will become the x2, y2, z2. So your wish. You have freedom. There is nothing. No strict rule. X1. I am assuming this part as x1, y1, z1. This is just for my convenience. This is not required for you to write, but this is just for your own understanding. And this point I will mark as x2, its name I will mark as x2, y2, and z2. Is it okay? Now we will find the distance between OA. So OA will be equal to now okay. Uh, x1 minus x2. So it's 2 minus 0, 2 minus 0 square plus y2, y1 minus y2, so 2 minus 0 again, 2 minus 0, and then 3 minus 0, 3 minus 0, this is z1 minus z2, whole square, and then the square root of all this. Is it okay? Now simplify, 2 minus 0 is 2, 2 minus 0 is 2, and 2 square is 4, plus 2 minus 0 is again 2, and then the square of that 2 will be 4, so this is 4. Now 3 minus 0 is again 3 and this 3 square is 9 so this is 9. Now just add it all. This is 4 plus 4 8 and plus 9 17. So root over 17. Clear? This become your answer. Remember that this is a distance. This is a distance. Therefore this will have some unit but we don't know what it is. So we can simply write this as unit. It could be anything. Am I very clear? Now this is your final answer. This is the end of your question. Is it okay? Sometime, if this number comes as a perfect square number, then you have to further reduce. It depends on what kind of number you get inside the root sign. Suppose if this number was 25, then you know that 25 is a perfect square number and the square root of 25 is 5. So further we can reduce the answer, uh, radical part and we will write the final answer as 5 unit. If this was a root 36, we could have written this as 6 unit because the square root of 36 is 6. Am I clear? But because this number is the square root of 17 and 17 is not a square number, therefore nothing can be done. So this remains as the answer. So I am very clear. So after understanding this question number 1, Roman number 1, Roman number 1, you, you are supposed to 
uh, take three assignment roman number 2 roman number 3 and roman number 4 uh, now we are moving on to question number 2 a uh, same question exactly the same question in question number 2 we have to find out the distance between the two given point clear and here also we have three questions in question number 2 we have three questions so we will take one question like number a clear now from the question you can see the number a is we have the coordinate of the two points uh, the first is 2 5 and 3 this is the coordinate of your one point and in that question the coordinate of your another point is negative 3 2 and 1 so we are we have these two points whose coordinates are given right and then the question is to find out the distance between these two points so this question is same as exactly same as question number 1 right in question number 1 we were asked to find out the distance of one point from the origin right and here we are give, already given both the points so we have to find out the distance between these two points clear so it will go in the same way let us name this coordinate a and b right and then we can find out the distance between a and b using the same formula ab is equal to uh again if you want you can name this as x1 y1 z1 and this as x2 y2 z2 your wish this is not compulsory this is not mandatory this is only for your own convenience if you feel writing you can write otherwise if you can mentally remember also good okay so since this is the beginning case so i am just writing it for your yourself uh this is x1 y1 z1 and this is x2 y2 z2 z2 is it okay now i am named it this i named clear now i am going to find the distance between a and b so it will be first of all the square of the difference of x1 x2 then we will have plus and then we have the square of the difference of y1 y2 and then lastly we will have the square of the difference of z z is it okay so we will write down 2 minus and this is negative so minus 3 please be very mindful of the sign here and then the square of this number plus 5 minus 2 5 minus 2 square and then we will have 3 minus 1 square is equal to now start simplifying this is minus minus plus minus minus plus so this is 2 plus 3 5 square plus this is 5 minus 2 this is 3 square plus this is 2 square is equal to 5 square 25 3 square 9 2 square 4 Is equal to nine twenty-five plus nine thirty-four thirty-four plus four thirty-eight. Right, thirty-eight. Is this very clear? This is your answer. And what I told you is, if this radical number, if this radical number is a square number, then we have to further reduce. I told you again. I am repeating. If this radical number is, if the radicand part, if the radicand, radicand means the number inside the root sign, number inside the root sign is called as radicand. So this thirty-eight is radicand. If this radicand is a square number, then we will simplify more. One more step, we will go. We will reduce it, and then we will write the final reduced answer. But because this is not a perfect square number, therefore it remains the answer. So with this two question. Now you might have clearly understood how to find the distance between the two points in the three D plane. Now we are moving on to question number three, and this is the application of the distance formula. We are going to now apply the concept of distance formula for solving some different type of questions, right? So the first type of question is question number three. In question number three, we are given the coordinate of three points, and we have to prove that these are the coordinate of right angle triangle. These are the coordinate of Right angle triangle. Is this very very clear? So what we can do here is, 
Uh, there, are three, there are two questions in this one. If you read the question, first of all, we have to prove that these are the coordinates of a right angle triangle, and then at the end, we have to also find out the area of the given triangle. Okay, so here we are going to do two things. That is why this question will be a bit lengthy. Okay, so please look at it. We are now going to start. So, first, what we can do is for our own convenience, we will name the three coordinates, right. The first coordinate we will name as A, then second coordinate we can name as B, and third coordinate we can name as C. So that it will be easy for us to find out the distance between AB, BC, and CA. Am I very clear? Alright. So this is about the distance formula. Am I very clear? Now, since we have to prove, please listen very carefully. Since we have to prove that these are the coordinates of right angled triangle, and we know that there is a theorem for right angle triangle. And the theorem of right angle triangle is the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of base and perpendicular. Example, I will show you. This is a right angle triangle. This is a right angle triangle. In which this is called as the base, right? This is called as the perpendicular and this is called as the hypotenuse. Right. According to Pythagoras theorem, what it says that the square of this hypotenuse, square of this hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the base and the perpendicular. You already know this from previous classes. B square plus P square. This is the Pythagoras theorem. Is this very clear? So, now what we can do is. Uh, in order to prove that these are this is a right angle triangle, the coordinates are the given coordinates are the coordinate of a right angle triangle. We will calculate all the distances in terms of a square. In terms of square, is it okay? So what will happen? You just see now. We will first of all calculate the distance between AB. Is this very clear? So we will when you calculate the distance between AB. AB. So what we will do is normally we have calculated the distance as AB is equal to root over some so and so and so, isn't it? But because this is for, we are calculating this for a right angle triangle, therefore in place of calculating AB, we will calculate AB square. Is it okay? AB square, right? And in that case, the square root from the right hand side will disappear. Is it okay? So it will become is equal to uh, now the difference of the x coordinate. So this is 6 minus 1 whole square plus 10 minus 0 whole square and z1 minus z2 plus 10 minus minus 5 whole square. Are you getting me? x1 minus x2 whole square plus y1 minus y2 whole square and plus z1 minus n minus 5, this is z2 whole square. Normally what, there used to be a square root sign, am I clear? And then this is, there is no square in the normal formula. But here we have done the modification is because what we did is we have squared the formula and then the radical sign from the right hand side will disappear and the square will appear on the left side. Am I understood? And now we can simplify. So when you simplify, this will come as equal to what? 6 minus 1, 5. And 5 square is 25. 10 minus 0, 10. And 10 square is 100. So this is 100. Plus, minus, minus, plus. So this will become 10 plus 5, 15. Please listen to me very carefully. 10 plus 5, 15. And square of 15 is 225. 225. So sum of all this number will come how much? 350. And this is unit. So the value of your AB square is 350. Is it okay? Now likewise we will calculate the side BC. BC square. This also we will calculate it because this, these three coordinates are the coordinates of a right angle triangle we have to prove. Therefore we are calculating all the length in square. Clear? So now BC we are calculating. So this is 6 minus 1 whole square plus minus 10 minus 0 clear and square and then 0 minus minus 5 
this way we are calculating the BC square. So it will come how much? 6 minus 1, 5. 5 square means 25. Plus this minus 10 minus 0. So minus 10 and minus 10 square is 100. Plus this is minus minus plus. So this is 5 and 5 square means 25. So this is 25. Now you can add it all and this will become 150 unit. So this is the length of your another side. Now let us calculate the last side that is AC or we can say CA, CA or AC and this also will be calculated in square. Okay, we are calculating again I am telling you, we are calculating the length of all the side in square so that we can use the Pythagoras theorem because with the Pythagoras theorem we have in terms of the square. So AC square, now 6 minus 6 square plus 10 minus minus 10 square plus 10 minus 0 square. Is this very clear? So this will become 6 minus 6, 0. 0 square means 0. This is 0 plus minus minus plus and this is 10. So 10 plus 10, 20 and square of 20 is 400. Clear? And this is 10 minus 0 is 10 and the square of 10 is 100, 100 and when, when you add it all you are getting this as 500 unit clear now you can see here after calculating the length of all the three sides in square we got a very clear picture whether these three coordinates are belonging to a right angle triangle or not right how can we know that this is a right angle triangle all the three sides are calculated in square right and the sum of the square of these two sides, sum of the square of these two sides is equal to the square of the third side. Is it coming or not? And this is the proof that these coordinates are belonging to are the coordinates of the right angle triangle. Clear? So we can say since since a b square plus b c square is equal to 350 plus 150 is equal to 500 and this 500 is the length of your CA square, right? So here we prove that AB square plus BC square is equal to CA square and this proves that this given vertices are the vertices of a right angle triangle. So we can say therefore the given, given coordinates, coordinates belongs to right angled triangle in short in the notation form am i very very clear because i need some space for calculating your another part of the question is and the another part of the question is to calculate the area of the triangle so now we are going to calculate the area of the triangle right uh, i will show you the picture this is your this is your right angle triangle a rough diagram this is your right angle triangle. Is it okay? Uh, and then one of the side is 150, another side is 350, right? And this is your 500. Am I very clear? This is what we have calculated. Now we are going to find the area of the triangle. So area of triangle. Area of triangle. Area of triangle is half of. Now if I name the side A B A B and C. You know that the area of the right angle triangle is half of base into into height. Am I very clear? So now this is what? This is BC square. This is BC square. Right? But for this formula, what you will need? Do you need BC square for calculating the area of the triangle? No. For calculating the area of triangle, we just need BC. Right? So if BC square is 150, that means what is BC? This square will go to right side. So when the square goes to the other side, it will change into square root. So this will become half of, this BC will become root of 150. Are you able to understand that for BC, BC means BC. Base means BC. Base means BC. Right? Clear? And this base has to be 
only BC, not the square. Therefore, we are trying to write the value of BC. And this is the value of BC square. This is the value of BC square, but we need the value of only BC. Therefore, the square will go to the other side. And therefore, the value of your BC will be root over 150. Likewise, you have to have the value of the height. Height is AB. And this is AB square, not AB. This is AB square. Therefore, to get the value of height, that means to get the value of AB, you have to move this square also to right side. So, this will become root over 350. Am I very clear? So now, let me simplify. This is 1 over 2. This we can write as uh, what we can do is uh, this this 2 we will try to take inside. Okay, This, what, this is 1 into something nothing, no need. What we can do is we can try to have one common radical sign because this is a product form. So we can write this as 150 into 350. Clear. And this 2 I am taking it inside. When this root, when this whole number goes inside the radical sign, it has to be squared and then taken inside. Right? If any whole number is to be taken inside the root sign, then it has to be squared and only then it can be taken inside. So I am squaring it. So the square of 2 is 4 and then I can take that. This is denominator. It will remain in the denominator. It will remain in the denominator. Are you getting me? How come this 2 became 4? Because we, have, we are taking this 2, 2 inside and therefore it has to be squared and therefore it became 4. Now simplify. This is 2 to the and this is 75 to the 75 to the 150. And this is 2 and the 2 and this is 175. Am I very clear? So this is 75 into 175. So this 75 I can factorize. I can write this as 25 into 3. Can I write? This is 75. I am writing as 75, 25 into 3. Am I right? And similarly this 175. I can write this 175 as 25 into 7. Can I do this or not? Can I do this? I wrote this 75 as 25 into 3. And this 175 I am writing as 25 into 7. 25 into 3 is 75 and 25 into 7 is 175. Clear? Now, after doing this, this 25 is a square number, so it will come out of the root sign. Its a square root will come out. Clear? This also is a square number, so this square root also will come out. Now, the square root of this 25 is 5, so this came out. The square root of this 25 is 5, this also came out. Clear? But this two number will remain as it is on the inside. And so we will multiply and then simplify. This is 21. And therefore your final answer is 25 root over 21. And this became the area of your triangle. So the unit we will write as unit square. This is the area of your this triangle. Is it very clear? Thank you. Uh, after completing question number 3, uh, question number 4 and question number 5 are very simple questions, right? Question number uh, question number 4, if you look at the board, question number 4 is to prove that the given triangle is an isosceles triangle. Question number 4 is to prove that the given triangle is an isosceles triangle. Do you know what is the meaning of isosceles triangle? Do you know the meaning of isosceles triangle? Isosceles triangle means where the two sides are equal. Very simple now. So this question becomes very interesting, right? Just by using the distance formula, we will be able to know whether this is isosceles triangle or not. So what you can do is, to, in order to solve this question, you can name the first coordinate as A, second coordinate as B, and the third coordinate as C. Am I very clear? Now find out the distance between AB, then find the distance between BC, and then find the distance between AC. Right? Distance between AB, BC, and CA. Clear? Now, after calculating these three distances, what you will notice is if they is if this is isosceles triangle, right? Then you will notice that the two distances will come same. If the two distances come the same, then that will be, this indicate that it is a isosceles triangle. So this question number four, I will leave for your assignment. Is this very clear? Question number four, I will leave it for your assignment where you have to. Uh, calculate all the three side and the length of the two side if it comes equal you will say that this is the proof that the given triangle is a isosceles triangle clear next question number five 
This question number five also will be your assignment. So I'm giving you two assignments: question number four and question number five. In question number five, we are asked to prove that the given triangle is a equilateral triangle, right? So it will be easy for you. Now in this case, again, same like question number four, just by calculating the distance by using the distance formula and calculating the distance between AB, BC, and CA. we can prove that the given triangle is a equilateral triangle because here in this case question number 5 all the three measurements will come all the three distances will come equal this will indicate that the given vertices are the vertices of a right angle triangle so uh, i am leaving this question number 4 and question number 5 for you for your part to do it as assignment in the room you can practice or you can practice in the class in the group so i am very clear now we are moving on to Last question for the day is question number six. Question number six: collinearity. Here there is a new word called as collinearity. Collinearity means points lying on the same line. Points lying on the same line. All the three points. There are three points given, and then we have to prove that the three points are collinear, are on the same line. All the three points are on the same line. All the three points are on the same line. This is what we have to prove. This is point A. This is point B. This is point C. In anywhere, A, B, and C. Is this okay? If this point B is somewhere here or there, then it is not collinear. But in this case, question number six, we have to prove that the given point is a collinear. Clear? So this collinearity also can be proved by using the collinearity can be proved by using uh, the distance formula. Clear? How can we do? Please remember. For the collinearity, once again, you are given the coordinate of three points A, B, and C. You can name the three points as A, B, and C. Find the distance between A, B. Find the distance between B, C, and find the distance between C, A. Clear? What you will notice after calculating all the three distances at the end, you will find that the sum of the two distances will be equal to the third distance. So, if you find that the sum of the two distances is equal to the third distance, then it indicates that this the three points are collinear points is this very clear so i am going to start calculating for you right you can name the first point as a b and c uh, let us name the three points clear the first point is 1 -1 and 3 this is the first point is this very clear question number 6 and then another is 2 -4 and 5 And the third point is five, negative thirteen, and one. So you are given the three points. Is this very clear? Negative thirteen and not one. It is eleven. It is eleven. Clear? We will calculate the distance between AB. We will calculate the distance between BC, and you will see. And then you will also calculate the distance between AC. After calculating, at the end you will notice that the sum of the distance between AB and BC. Will be equal to AC, and if comes so, then this will prove that the points are collinear. So let us start. Let's calculate the distance between AB. So AB will be one minus two whole square, one minus two whole square plus minus one minus minus one minus minus four square plus three minus five, three minus five square root over is equal to. One minus two is minus one. Minus one is square is just one. Then minus this is minus minus plus. So minus one and plus four that means plus three. And plus three is square means nine. Then three minus five is minus two and minus two is square is four. This is coming how much? Root over fourteen. Root over fourteen. Is it okay? Let us calculate now BC. BC. BC is two minus five square plus minus four minus minus thirteen square plus five minus eleven square root over is equal to two minus five minus three minus three square is nine. This is minus minus plus so thirteen. And minus four, nine, and nine is square means eighty-one. Plus five minus eleven, six. Six is square means thirty-six. The result will always come positive because all the terms are square. Now nine one ten and six sixteen. 
9, 1, 10, and 6, 16. Carry on, 8, 3, 1, and 12. Now this we can factorize. When you factorize, this can be written as 9 into 14. Clear? Now you know that 9 is a perfect square number. So take it out. So this becomes 3 root over 14. Is this very clear? Now likewise we will calculate AC. AC. So now when you calculate AC, it will be 1 minus 5 whole square. Then minus 1 minus minus 13 plus minus 1 minus minus 13 square plus 3 minus 11 3 minus 11 square and then square root of all over so this comes how much uh, 1 minus 5 is minus 4 minus 4 square means 16 plus this is positive minus minus 13 means 13 becomes positive and this minus 1 is negative. So 13 minus 1, 12. And 12 square is 144. The square of 12 is 144. 3 minus 11 is a minus 8. Minus 8 square is 64. 64. Now let us add all these numbers. So 6, 4, 10, 4, 14. Carry 1. 7, 4, 11 and 1, 12. And then 2. This is 224. Yes. This can be factorized as 16, 16 into 14. What we have to keep in mind is we should factorize these numbers in such a way so that we can get a perfect square. When you factorize this number, you have to have one of these as perfect square. Only then there is purpose of factorizing it because we want to reduce it. Clear? So after factorization, now this is our square number. We can simply take it out. The square root of this one is 4 root 14. Now look here. We calculated the length of AB. B, C and C, A. Clear? Now, uh, A, B is this. B, C is this. And C, A is this. Right? Now, looking at the length of these three, which, which of these three length is the biggest one? Obviously, this one. So, let us see now whether this length is equal to the sum of these two or not. If this length is equal to the sum of these two, then the three points are collinear is truth. Clear? So, let us do that. So, A, B plus bc is equal to what this is root 14 this is 3 this is 3 root 14 right and now when you simplify the coefficient of this root 14 is 3 the coefficient of this root 14 is 1 so they are like term they, that means their coefficient can be added because the radical parts are same the radical parts are same therefore the two terms are like term and therefore they can be simplified so 3 plus 1, coefficient of this one is 1, so 3 plus 1 is 4. So 4 root of 14. So the sum of these two sides gives you the sum of this one, right? This is equal to AC. And this proves that the points are collinear. Therefore, the points are collinear. Are collinear. Is this okay? So with this, we are ending the session today. Today we have done uh, from question number 1 till question number 6. So please have good practice of this 6th question. Thank you so much.